Hi, I'm Marty Nimco. Two identical twins could use the same tools for living up to their potential. Self-study, tutoring, classes, degree programs, or internship, or on-the-job training. And yet one of the identical twins could improve much more and more relevantly. This little talk is describing how to make the most of each of those. We'll start with self-study. The key here is ruthless curation. There is so much content available. Get good at Google searching. If you need to, use, they have a tutorial, just Google, <laughs> Google, the term Google search tutorial. Then read just the brief descriptions of the first few search results. If, I mean only if, one or more of those promise to be of real value, should you click on it? Otherwise, you're going to go on, you could be going on, you know, as they say, down lots of rabbit holes. If you haven't found one that really promises to be a real value, consider revising your search term. Let's talk about articles. When you click on a link, don't necessarily read the whole thing. Read the first few lines, and if those continue to intrigue you, skim the rest, carefully reading only what you find important. Copy and paste important things that you don't already know or insights you don't already have into a word file that you're going to call Nuggets. Regularly reread your Nugget file until its ideas are locked into your permanent memory for retrieval as you need to. Word about videos. Videos are less efficient than articles, but still worth considering. If the search results brief description promises value to you, watch its first few seconds. Often, that can help you decide whether it's worth continuing to watch. As with articles, jot down important learnings into your Nugget file. Books. They are less efficient still, unless you're particularly ruthless in your curation, both of which book to buy and what parts to skim, to read, and to put into your Nugget file. It's fashionable to bash the big these days, but Amazon.com is a dream come true for the self-studier. Search it on your, you know, they have a search function there on Amazon. Search it on your desired search term. Screen in those books whose description appeals and has a four plus star rating based on more than a few ratings. Read the first few reviews. The order in which those reviews are listed is based on their estimated usefulness. That algorithm that Amazon has is based at least in part on how many people clicked useful for that review and the number of people who clicked useful on the reviewer's review of other books. Next, decide whether it's more time effective to just copy nuggets from those reviews and, you know, into your nugget file or to buy the book. Now, let's say you choose to buy a book. Consider opting for Kindle. It's inexpensive or at least less expensive than the printed book usually portable, delivered instantly, and it's even environmentally benevolent. Second best is usually to buy the printed book used. It's often available at a big discount. More important though than format is to efficiently curate within the book. First, from its table of contents, pick the chapter that most intrigues. When in doubt, read the introductory or concluding chapter. Those often include the book's essence. Read the very beginning of that chapter, and then scan the headings. Under each intriguing heading, read in search of nuggets to copy into your nugget file. Only slow down to carefully read a section when it's clear it's rich with information or insight that you want to obtain. Repeat that process for any chapters you think might potentially be of value, not necessarily all of them. Now let's turn to tutoring, how to make the most of that. It's easy to kowtow to a tutor's agenda. That's usually a mistake. Usually the most efficient approach is to use the tutor to answer questions that you've derived from your self-study. Write those questions in your Nugget file. Having worked both in person and remotely with thousands of career and personal coaching clients, I am confident that you needn't limit your choice of tutor to locals. Consider trying to find a well-suited, highly rated tutor at websites that aggregate tutors worldwide, such as wiseant.com, or tutor.com. As usual, consider both the average rating as well as the narrative reviews. As you review a potential tutor, consider tutors who struggled, ironically, to learn the material. Why? 
because they may be able to better explain things to people who are not naturals at the subject. For example, I play the piano very well, but I'm a natural. I'm a terrible piano teacher. I, I also think about math whizzes who just get it intuitively, but they're not good at explaining it to mere mortals. Be open to the possibility that your tutor might become an ongoing mentor, someone to reach out to whenever you have a question, small or big picture. Now some thoughts about classes, taking classes. The number of online classes has skyrocketed, so you can be picky. LinkedIn Learning, Udemy, and Coursera.org aggregate thousands of courses easily searchable. As usual, first screen by star ratings, then by narrative reviews. But here you can add one more helpful step. Most online courses, maybe even in-person courses, include the syllabus. Also, many such courses allow you to attend the first session free and then drop it at no charge. Speaking of charge, the cost of online classes are generally bargain basement. As usual, write into your nugget file any important information and insights that you didn't already know. Don't be afraid to ask your so-called dumb question. That's the individualized instruction you're paying for, paying not just with your money, but with your time. Similarly, if you think you'd benefit, visit the instructor's office hours when you want counsel or to share your ideas that are broader than you could express in an email. Even after the course is over, considering, consider calling on an instructor for advice and counsel. Now let's turn to degree and certificate programs. Some people enroll in degree programs or certificate programs not because they're efficient, but because they perceive that the money, time, and opportunity cost are worth it. For example, that it would help their resume levitate to the top of the job applicant pile. Alas, we are in an era of degree proliferation, in which even an advanced degree, unless it's from a designer label institution, may yield levitation insufficient to compensate for said expenditure of time and money. Of course, there are ways to make the most of a certificate or degree program. Choose an advisor whose expertise, and ideally career connections, dovetail with your goals. Set up a meeting early on. If the two of you click, perhaps offer to be his or her research or teaching assistant. If not then, maybe you'll make that ask later. Certainly map out a tentative schedule, including the electors for your years there. Your advisor is the person most likely to become your mentor during the program, perhaps afterwards. So if you are not pleased with your advisor, do ask the program's administrative assistant for a change. Of course, choose electives that align with your goals, but also give weight to the instructor. A transformative instructor of medieval Indo-European linguistics may help you overall, maybe thinking, writing, even an approach to life, more than would a weak instructor of a topic that's of interest. When given a major assignment, including, of course, your capstone thesis or project, don't necessarily do what's assigned or even recommended. If you can think of a topic you're more motivated to do or that's more beneficial to you, make your case. More often than you might think, you'll get a yes. And finally, let's talk about making the most of internship, fieldwork, and on-the-job training. Don't necessarily accept the fieldwork or internship placement or even job that it was, you've gotten. Uh, perhaps you can search out your own better suited field work or internship and ask if you can be placed there. Or if after your first visit to your placement you sense you won't sufficiently benefit, request a switch. That's important. Many graduates say that except perhaps for the diploma and connections, their internship or field work was the most useful part of their degree or certificate program. And certainly many people say that on-the-job training is more useful than what even they learned in their degree program. And as always, keep adding to your nugget file. Whether it's for career enhancement or for personal growth, it's certainly true that making the most of those learning tools, not just using them, but making the most of them, is key to living up to your potential. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I'm Marty Nemco. I welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments and especially like it if you hit the share button below. Share on your social media so that my efforts can have broader impact. And I am flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemco.